Okay, well, someone, this is very serious, and I don't know if I should address it because I'm somewhat tired, but I'll give it a shot because it's important. Now, it's a very serious and, and troublesome question. I plan on taking my own life very soon. Why shouldn't I? Well, I'm going to assume this isn't a casual question, you know, that's being put out for the purposes of display. Well, the first thing I would say is you have to think very carefully through the consequences of that for other people. So I've had clients in my clinical practice who never recovered from the suicide of a family member. Decades later, they're still torturing themselves about it. And so that's what you leave behind. Now, the problem is you might be dreaming about that, you know, because maybe you're feeling that life has been twisted against you and that people deserve to suffer for the misery that they've imposed upon you. But I would say, think very, very carefully before you go down that route. You know, it's, it's a terrible thing to leave people with. And so part of the reason that suicide has been illegal in most societies is because it absolutely devastates the people you leave behind. And you might think, well, they, you know, if you're really depressed, then maybe you're really depressed. That's a possibility. You might think, well, those people would be better off without me. It's like, and if you get really depressed, you can think that way. And you can even get to the point where you can't think any other way than that. And I would say, if you're at the point where you can't think any other way than that, then you should tell someone and you should go to the hospital. Because that can happen, you know, and it can happen if you get depressed. And there are treatments for depression, you know, and many of them work. For, for some people, antidepressants work like mad. Now, they don't work for everyone, and I'm not claiming that they're a panacea, but they certainly beat the hell out of suicide. Right? And even if they have some negative side effects, and sometimes they do, quite frequently they do, <laughs> the negative side effects aren't fatal. It's like, well, there's certainly there's the possibility that, that, that your condition is physical, that you're ill in some way, either physically or perhaps you have a psychological problem, maybe you were hurt, or, or I mean, there's lots of reasons that people get depressed that are very, very complex. I would say don't give up hope without don't give up hope and do something final before you've explored all possible options. And if you haven't talked to a psychologist, you haven't talked to a psychiatrist, you haven't tried antidepressants, you haven't revealed to your family or people that care for you that this is how you're feeling, then you owe it to yourself and them to explore every possible avenue before you take such a step. And then you don't want to deprive the world of, who, of, of what you can bring to the world. That's the other thing, you know, you, you have intrinsic value, and you can't just casually bring that to an end. You leave a hole in the fabric of being itself. So, you know, and a wise man that I once worked with said, he was a very strange person. He was a psychologist at the maximum security prison in, in Edmonton, and I worked with him for a while, briefly, very briefly, at the prison itself. And he said, you can always commit suicide tomorrow. And, and that's a very, like it's a flippant statement in some sense, but he meant it in a very serious way. It's like, you only get to decide that once. And you can put it off. And so I would say just put it off, and then put it off some more, and then put it off some more, and see what you can do to put yourself together. You know, you explore every possible option. And if, if, you're, if you're so hopeless that you have a suicidal plan, which is a real sign of danger. If you really know how you would do it and you've thought it out, then I would say, tell someone for God's sake, tell them, and, or go to a hospital and tell them, and for sure, try antidepressants, but what the hell do you have to lose? So do everything you possibly can to address the issue before you do something like that, and do give some thought to the people that you're going to leave behind, because believe me, you may just absolutely wipe them out in a way that they will never recover from. You cannot fix someone's suicide. You're stuck with it. And you think you torture yourself for the rest of your life. If I would have only known, if I would have only said something different, this particular client talked to her, her relative, a sibling who committed suicide, like 20 minutes before he committed suicide, probably after he took the pills. You know, and she was kind of preoccupied because you don't know that the person at the other end is at the end of their tether. And she never forgave herself for not responding properly in that last phone call. That's a hell of a thing to leave someone with. So I would say, and the final thing I would say is don't be so sure that your life is yours to take. 
You know, you don't own yourself the way that you own an object. You have a moral obligation to yourself as a, as a locus of divine value, let's say. You can't treat that casually. That's, it's, it's wrong. So those are the reasons. Explore everything you can explore to put yourself back on your feet. All the things. There's all sorts of treatments for depression. Don't leave the people around you with that to suffer from for the rest of their lives. Don't underestimate your value in the world. And don't underestimate the fact that suicide is wrong. And so those are four reasons why you shouldn't end your life soon, or at all, for that matter. So.